So uh, scapula, though, is an important bone. It's usually forgotten in polytrauma because of the multiple associated injuries taking priority. And it's a strong belief that it will always heal and is uh, put in a sling place treatment. But it is not the case. Uh, some cases lead to symptomatic malunion. So why there is no consensus in scapular fracture? The rare fracture, is no standardized method of measuring or classification of fracture displacement. Different outcome measures are used and only case series. So I'm here to show you eight of my cases to see, to show how I handle them. So it's very important in the clinical examination to check and document a neurovascular status, especially sensory examination to check nerve injury is very important. Classically, four X-rays have been described. A uh, difference between a shoulder AP X-ray and a scapular AP X-ray taken in a tilted manner is that you could see the scapula in profile with the clavicle and the acromion. It's mandatory to do two X-rays lateral view. One is the shoulder axillary lateral view to check the glenohumeral articulation. And second is the scapular Y view to see the alignment of the scapular blade with the anterior posterior processes. If you suspect a displacement of the fracture or articular involvement, please get a 3D CT scan and also subtract the humerus to see the glenoid fossa because the integrity of the glenoid is very important. The couple of measurements have been described. One is a GPA or glenopolar angle, which is the angle between the plane of the glenoid and the lateral border of the scapula. Second is the mediolateral displacement. The difference between this affected shoulder and opposite shoulder is uh, marked. Based on the location of the fracture, it's the common in body and spine, followed by glenoid neck and the fossa, and then the acromion and coracoid processes. Uh, let us look at the cases. A 44-year-old man, chest injury and a knee fracture and a shoulder fracture. If you look at the CT scan, it has the scapular body fracture only. The glenoid is intact. So I treated this patient conservatively, home in sling support, ice pack, mobilized as comfortable. At, at early as four weeks, you could have the movement. The key is the scapular muscles sandwiching the scapular bone will mold it and heal better. So mobilize early. This is an example of a 25-year-old man presenting three weeks after road traffic accident, has the scapular body fracture as well as a glenoid intraarticular fracture, displaced and is three weeks. So I decided to treat this operatively. There are three surgical approaches for the posterior direction. Whatever you do, beware of the nerve anatomy and stay close to the bone. This is the classical Jude approach incision and the deltoid is erased from the acromion attachment. I prefer the subdeltoid approach is a direct posterior incision on the shoulder and the deltoid is retracted up and the plane between the infraspinatus and teres major is used. I use the lateral position with the C arm coming from the top. The glenoid ORIF is done with the joystick reduction using the wires. And I have used here a couple of hand system plate with the 2.7 millimeter screws. Because I also do hand surgery, I have this available all the time. So this is the closure. And that is him at six months follow up. So well healed fracture glenoid as well as the body fracture has healed, leading to a good functional outcome. You could see the scar on the back of his shoulder. So scapular body fracture heals well, rarely leads to symptomatic malunion. You consider surgery only if the displacement is significant. Like this 25-year-old man presenting after road traffic accident with the crepitus in the back of the shoulder, pain on movement of the shoulder above 90 degrees. He has got significant frontal plane displacement of the fragment. So I use the pillar approach, the direct approach to the lateral border of the scapula, approach the proximal fracture, is a small hand system plate, and the distal fracture through the same incision and plate it. And this is the closure, and that is his range of movement at six months follow-up. So let us look at the second group. It's a superior shoulder suspensory complex described by Gauss in 1993. 
you have a clavicle ACJ and acromion strut on the top and a clavicle coracoclavicular ligament coracoid strut on the front with the processes acromion coracoid and superior glenoid connecting below. This forms a circle. This suspensory complex suspend the shoulder. A single disruption could be in the distal clavicle or ACJ disruption or coracoid process or acromion process. As a good review article on these scapular processes fracture for those with interest to see. The basic is the coracoid fracture needs surgery attention if the fracture is proximal to the level of coracoclavicular ligament attachment. The indication for surgery is this as well as symptomatic non-union. The treatment is mostly a screw fixation. Acromion fracture, the indication for surgery is on type three, which is the displaced fracture with the reduction of subacromial space and mechanical impingement of the cuff. Also symptomatic non-union, mal-union should be addressed as well. The common type of fixation is ORIF using tension band fixation or increasingly we use locking plates here. Double disruption of the complex, which is the glenoid neck fracture and the mid shaft fracture of the clavicle is the classical floating shoulder. So as an example of a floating shoulder injury in a 60 year old man after road traffic accident, you could see there is a glenoid neck fracture and also a glen uh, clavicle mid shaft fracture. But do not jump to surgery because it is a floating shoulder because these injuries are minimally displaced. So I treated him conservatively leading to a good final outcome with healing of both fracture and also restoration of full flexion abduction and rotation of the shoulder. But this 31 year old man after road traffic accident comes with a floating shoulder, but he has got a displaced to mid shaft fracture clavicle as well as displaced to fracture neck of the scapula. The, the two disruption the glenopolar angle is the difference is less than 20 degree and the glenoid is intact. So I treated this clavicle with a pre-contoured clavicle locking plate and left the neck fracture to heal on its own. If you look at that, the fracture is healing nicely with a restoration of normal glenoid uh, facing. That is his range of movement at three months follow up. There's another case that is six year old man on bike accident. You could uh, see the uh, hemothorax on the chest with the multiple fracture ribs and the floating shoulder injury. So that is the uh, clavicle fracture, the neck fracture. If you see there's a GPA difference is less than 20 degrees. There's no tilt of the glenoid. Glenoid posa is intact. So I decided to fix the clavicle fracture and left the uh, glenoid neck alone for that to heal. I fix the glenoid neck fracture only if there is a GPA difference of more than 20 degrees compared to the opposite side. A combination at the neck level is not an indication for surgery. So that is his range of movement at uh, two months follow up. Uh, but, uh, I mobilized them uh, day one postoperative. And that is the range of external and internal rotation this young gentleman has. So uh, this uh, is supported by literature showing good to excellent results in the over 90% of cases when you fix the clavicle fracture with the floating shoulder girdle injuries. So the triple disruptions have been described with the combination of coracoid and acromion fracture with either involvement of clavicle or ACG. With uh, uh, Indian uh, road traffic uh, status and the high velocity injury, I have a few cases of multiple fractures in the scapula. I will show a couple of examples on how we uh, dealt with them. So this is the first of this uh, patient, 43 year old policeman after road traffic accident has this significant injury to the right shoulder. You can't see much uh, clarities around in the plain X-ray. This is a CT scan showing the extent of injuries. I will list them for you. So a scapular body fracture, coracoid process fracture, acromion process fracture, acromion spine fracture, and the glenoid intraarticular fracture. So I decided to address the serious conditions of this list to restore the strut mechanism of the superior suspensory complex. So acromion process, acromion spine fracture, and the glenoid fracture need to be addressed. So this is the posterior approach uh, the, uh, to address the uh, acromion acromion uh, process fracture with the tension band wiring. 
and I plated the uh, acromion spine fracture using a clocking plate. I uh, used to use a, a pre-contoured uh, scapular plate in UK, but now in India, I used to either the uh, lateral, lateral clavicle plate or a distal radius uh, plate. So this is the post-operative fixation of the posterior aspect. I uh, closed the wound. I uh, moved to the uh, sitting position and did an anterior approach to fix the glenoid fracture from the front. So this is his uh, five-year follow-up. I called him today to check how he is on. He has been uh, now to his uh, corona duty on his uh, favorite motorbike and he has got a very good range of movement of the right shoulder as well as probation. And this sort of results is possible if you restore the strep mechanism of the shoulder to get the suspensory complex in place. So the uh, last case of the series, the 30-year-old man, right-handed, professional percussionist. He was involved in a road traffic accident. He had fracture of multiple ribs, chemothorax, fracture spinous process of D3 to D9, and the right shoulder injury. This is a very common scenario for a scapular fracture. As I said before, the associatory injuries take priority. They have to be treated. The patient's general condition should be improved. Then only we will sort out the uh, scapular fracture. The only uh, exception is the fracture dislocation, which you need to address in as early as possible. Otherwise, they can wait for uh, some time. So this is the chest in, uh, x-ray, and that is his shoulder x-ray. If you look at this fracture, he has got a scapular body fracture. He has got an AC joint subluxation and acromion spine type 3 fracture. You see the angulation, the mechanical impingement it can cause, the glenoid Eidberg type 5 fracture. So here I have to address the acromion spine fracture and the glenoid fracture. So the, I use the uh, curved incision, uh, more like a Jude incision, but the inside approach is the subdeltoid approach between the infraspinatus and the teres major, I plated the uh, glenoid from the posterior direction. And through the uh, same incision on the top, I plated the uh, acromion spine with the lateral clavicle locking plate. So that is uh, after closure of the osteoperiosteal layer over the uh, scapular plate. It is important to do this, otherwise the people will have uh, metal work prominence. So that is him at the three months post operative. Okay. You see the uh, scar and the uh, range of movement at three months follow. After fixation, I let him have a sling and mobilize the shoulder as comfortable with assisted forward elevation up to 90 degrees as the most. So that is his range of external rotation and internal rotation after his glenoid fracture. So now uh, he sent me this video. This is the Tamil, Tamilian percussion, traditional percussion instrument called Tavil, and is back to playing this for uh, about one hour to two hour program without any discomfort in the show. So complications of the scapular fracture could be, as I said, neurogenic. At the time of injury, it's important to recognize. Uh, and off conservative treatment, occasional scapular thoracic crepitus. If the glenoid fracture is neglected, it can lead to arthritis, stiffness, or instability. The complications of operative treatment is mainly metalwork discomfort. Uh, I don't recommend routine removal of this plate uh, or uh, fixation. Uh, when it is disco causing discomfort, you need to remove it. Uh, to summarize, uh, it is important to assess and treatment the associated injuries that takes priority. You have to respect the scapula, don't ignore, understand the pattern of injury with the 3D CD, mostly conservative treatment, except if there is an articular fracture, gap, or step more than four millimeter, or significant glenoid involvement, uh, displace the clavicle fracture and scapular neck. This is the classical floating shoulder. My recommendation is to fix the clavicle first and fix the glenoid neck if there is a significant uh, displacement. And uh, multiple disruption or multiple fracture, restore the key strut to gain the mechanism of the shoulder suspension. Thank you very much.